I'm at Data Center Dynamics 2015, talking to Aaron Shinoy, the Vice President of Schneider Electric's IT business. Aaron, tell me, why do you think Telco has a strong play in the Internet of Things and edge computing? Well, again, as, as an industry, as we've grown, um, and, and, and if, I think if we think about the industry in kind of two, two areas, so, so we, have, we have the Internet, the Internet in the context of network infrastructure uh, that has been built uh, on the one hand to support data centers from an infrastructure perspective, and on the other hand to connect those data centers to consumers. Um, and the evolution of the internet over the last 20 or so years and the data center infrastructure that supports what consumers look and, and, and feel in terms of that infrastructure um, is very much governed by a consumption model. Mm -hmm. In other words, the, the, the end devices in reality, mobile phones, smartphones, of which there are somewhere in the region of eight and a half billion worldwide today, um, are really cons consumption devices. They're pulling content from the internet. And wherever that content comes from, it's ultimately a, a centralized model. Um, and that applies to streaming as much as it does to messaging, as much as it does to applications. As the internet develops to support the internet of things, um, that consumption model changes quite dramatically. We're going to put sensors and, and actuators, you know, and lots of quite intelligent devices at the very edge of the network, and they're no longer going to be consuming content, they're going to be producing content. At which point in time the internet starts to creep a little bit, because the internet, as I said, designed very much as a consumption download model, not as a true bi-directional, you know, asynchronous platform. So the choices that we have are actually quite simple we can refurbish the internet infrastructure as a whole. And that's a very time-consuming, you know, risk-prone, expensive process. Um, or we can think a little bit differently about how we want to create data center infrastructure. And I think that's where the market is moving. The market's really moving in a couple of directions at the same time. The market is moving towards the very large, hyperscale, mega data center players, the Amazons, the Facebooks, the Microsofts, the Googles of this world who are essentially focused on centralizing large blocks of infrastructure to support you know, the vast majority of cloud requirements. However, from an IoT perspective, we also need to understand that if those devices are going to generate content, the problem that we face in terms of internet bottlenecks, internet bandwidth, um, requires that different solution. And that's where the market is going, also going in another direction at the same time. And by the way, th these are entirely uh, complementary directions. So it's not a one or the other, it is in fact both. And that second area is, is edge. And by edge we mean taking data centers and effectively creating a much larger, highly distributed, federated set of small facilities that are much closer to where the content is being created. Now, why is that important? The, the biggest driver from an IoT perspective is really in industry. It's not a consumer business today, it's an industry business. And industries, water and utilities and power stations and oil and gas pharmaceuticals, factories, etc. they're putting IoT devices in place so that they can better manage, better monitor what is going on in the infrastructure. But they also want to use that intelligence to make very rapid decisions about how to automate infrastructure, how to change things, how to be more energy efficient, how to be more operationally efficient. And for that kind of workload, I think what is not an optimal way is to take that workload all the way back to the center, process it in some way, and then send it all the way back to the edge. It's much more useful to do that in local loops. And to do that, you need to build local infrastructure. And actually part of our industrialization as an industry needs to take that into account. Um, we talk about the life cycle of infrastructure. Actually nowhere is that more important than in edge networks. Because what we don't have the luxury of doing is developing and deploying edge infrastructure in the same way that we make it a very heavy human process to manage it. So we have to bring technology, we have to bring industrial process automation in so that we can better manage that remote infrastructure. Um, but, but as I said, you know, the market is going in both of those ways, both of those directions. Um, and as Schneider, we have you know, a very clear set of, 
of, of product offerings, a very clear set of software and automation platforms, um, and a very clear view of what that future looks like. Um, and that's a discussion that we're getting into with our customers, both those that operate in the hyperscale space and those that operate in, in the edge. And so, just to come back to the question, why do you think telcos will have a, have a strong play in this, in this evolving landscape? Well, a couple of reasons. Um, and I think if we look at the, the, the things that I talked about in terms of how that sort of processing, how that workload is changing over time, we also have to recognize there are other things that are regulating this industry, safe harbor and data sovereignty. And that requires a, a quite different model to a very centralized sort of multi-regional, I'm not quite sure where my data is being held type of approach. Now the telcos for the last hundred or so years have built their business entirely on that model. I'll give you an example. When you pick up your mobile phone to make a call, what you don't do is re-authenticate yourself with the network. That, that has already taken place. That is already a relationship of trust between your device and the infrastructure. And in many ways, telcos have spent many decades building up infrastructure from a reliability perspective, from a security perspective, to be able to do that. The challenge for them is that the consumption model, again, is changing. It is no longer just about voice and data. It's about rich applications. It's about cloud. It's about content. And it's about content both from a creation and a consumption point of view. So the telcos already have an infrastructure that is trusted, they already have an infrastructure that is secure, they already have an infrastructure that is reliable, but it is not necessarily the right infrastructure to support an ICT workload. So they're having to go through their own infrastructure modernization programs. They have to move from a very telco network switching driven environment to a much more converged ICT environment so that they can become part of the content economy, so that they can become part of the cloud economy, so that they can develop applications and services that we as consumers want from them. And to do that, they need to make that transition from a very telco network switching centered world to a converged ICT environment. And that means bringing what has essentially happened for the last 30 or 30 years in the data center space and applying it to that infrastructure modernization. And I don't think they're going to go down the centralized route for exactly the same reasons that for many, many decades they've built an infrastructure that suits them and their customers. And I think they will simply modernize that infrastructure. Um, and, and that's really where edge comes in for them. That's what edge means to them. It's that conversion from you know, one architecture to another, specifically so that they can participate in these much bigger economies, content, content distribution, content creation, cloud, application services, and everything that goes with it. So they could be very, very vital to the um, uh, to this kind of vast increase in data production that we're like, this is a tenfold data increase in data production people are talking about. It, absolutely. I, I don't believe that the future, both from a consumer perspective, so when we go from, you know, 8 billion connected smartphones to 20 billion, and as an example, you know, China has about 50% penetration from you know, a, a, a citizen to internet connectivity perspective. That is of course going to change. Um, I saw a recent study that, that, that said that every Chinese citizen by 2020 will have seven IP addresses on their body. So you know, we're going to this highly connected world and that's before we even get into the IoT space. And I think if telcos are Tel telcos are the organizations that are best placed to leverage what they already have and modernize it. The, the cost of getting into that kind of infrastructure for companies that are not telcos is huge. And I think for the vast majority of them will be incre incredibly pro prohibitive. So yeah, absolutely. I really strongly believe that telco is you know, the biggest segment that can take advantage of age.